Um, when we went to England for the book release, this, these kids were outside of the movie was just opening, Beat Street was opening. And they had this boom box that was all decorated and it has all the, you can see, wild style and hip hop. And that was the first time that I began to think, well, this is traveling. I, up until then, I had thought that this was a strictly New York um, culture. But obviously, it had gone to England and like, left over uh, the ocean. And I published this picture for the first time in the hip hop files. And the boy with the boombox got in touch with me and is emailing me. And he has a gallery in England now, and he's still an artist. So. That's kind of interesting. Um, meanwhile, I was trying to get my photography career going, so I kind of dropped the graffiti coverage and began working on trying to get regular assignments. I did an article for National Geographic about pollen. <laughs> Which, <laughs> and I mean, I think this is interesting because at the time, this is what I really, really wanted to do. I wanted to work for National Geographic. There's not one picture that I ever took for National Geographic that, that I'm interested in looking at now. But that's something to think about. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know what you want. Uh, this is another archaeology assignment. This is in uh, Cyprus. So I got to go to some interesting places, but the assignments were really hard. And um, technically, like setting up lights and trying to, you know, these were not easy things to do. And what were you trying to light? Like a bunch of old stuff. Um, okay, now we're fast forwarding to what am I doing now? Well, I still sometimes cover some uh, b-boying events. And I have gone through a couple of battles of the year. This is Lilu winning uh, a Red Bull Battle of the Year. No, not liberal, so but the battle of the year in Germany. Um, I, I began to get interested in uh, what role women were playing in hip hop. So I, did, I shot a book about uh, B-girls. And I know I met, I met at least one B-girl from Mexico yesterday who did a nice freeze for me. Okay. Um, I was finally, after 40 years, I got this book published. <laughs> It actually took me 40 years, but I did, I was able to publish this book about Japanese tattooing. So the lesson there, don't give up. Um, a lot of a lot of artists are now using my photographs uh, with permission and for their art. They're like, um, it's really a collaboration. This is a, a wall that Alex Boyd painted from one of my old street play photos. It's in his car. It's still there now. Um, this is Ico, Lady Ico from Japan. She used one of the tattoo pictures from her stencil. Uh, I've done a couple of collaborations with Shepard Ferry. There's those of those boys with their wooden guns in the clubhouse. Um, and you can put an enormous one of them up. Uh, in Soho, when he had a show, a huge wheat paste, and also has a smaller wheat paste that he regularly uses. Um, this is, I'm working in Baltimore now, this is uh, another artist, uh, Jack Sanorama, he used one of my Baltimore pictures for a wheat paste. Uh, this is Gaia, which is Gaia is from Mexico. He used one of my old pigeon photos. This is the boy in this picture is the boy that introduced me to Dandy B3. Uh, this is NASA from Argentina. Um, I like that. I think this is a very clever use of that photo. Um, I'm sure you've seen lots of versions of this. This, this is a favorite for different artists. Um, People don't always ask my permission. <laughs> this, is, this is just a flyer I picked up in Germany. I, I have no idea who it is. Um, this is he three today. He was in jail for 15 years for drugs, and uh, he's out. And so this is him posing by the same wall. 
as the world that he first went, I first met him. Uh, this is Futura now, and back in the day. Uh, Lady Pink. Lee and Blade, pretty much the same pose. And, and the one on the, on the right, they're holding the 25th anniversary edition of Subway Art, which we were able to put out a couple of years ago. Um, that's Crash and Days, both of whom are very active in the, the graffiti and street art world. Uh, I would say more street art and galleries, they go to the gallery. There's Blade holding up uh, the, the European edition and the, the American edition had different colors for some way. Um, that's Ken Swift, who was one of those original B-boys, and in this picture he's judging a B-boy uh, event in Europe. This is uh, my room at a big show at MOCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art in LA. And this is when I first decided to get the portraits of people that I shot. Uh, and these are, many of these are the same ones, and most of these are the same ones that you'll see wherever you, where you've seen if you painted. Uh, I reprinted them and we have a set here. Uh, so there was now, uh, this was the first really major graffiti street art exhibition in the United States. And Duster showed up. This is the guy that painted the Duster Lizzie train on the right. Uh, I hadn't seen him for maybe 25 years. And then he lives in California. Um, and now I'm, there, there are graffiti and street art events all over the world. Um, and I'm going to a lot of them. This one is in Puerto Rico. Uh, this is, I just came from this one in Hawaii. And the artists are, at these events, the artists are being brought from all over the world, so it's a great opportunity for them to meet each other. And there's sort of a street art graffiti circuit that they're on. I think it's pretty exciting. Um, this is, I'm sure you recognize, Hunter and Sega. I met them in Miami a couple of years ago uh, at Wynwood Walls. It's a, a street art complex in Miami. This is Roa in South Africa. And this is a project um, that I'm working on now in my hometown of Baltimore. I bought this house in a very poor neighborhood. It's a tiny little house. Um, and I'm trying to document this neighborhood, which is quite a difficult neighborhood. Um, like the South Bronx, there are a lot of boarded up buildings, but I'm looking for life on the street. I wanted to get back to my street photography. I'll have to show you a few of these. I'm always interested in people that are doing creative art in everyday life. <laughs> Halloween, this is Halloween. <laughs> So the neighborhood that I'm documenting in Baltimore is called Sowebo, the Southwest Baltimore. But the person that started calling it that named it after Soweto in South Africa. So I was lucky enough to be invited to a street art event in South Africa, in Johannesburg, and I wanted to go to so the real Soweto to see what it was like because I've been working in Sowebo. And I found that there were a lot of similarities. So I put together a little zine, and I'm going back to South Africa next week for the third time, and I'm still working on this project. And I'm comparing Sowebo and Soweto. So these pairs of pictures, the picture above is uh, South Africa, Soweto, and the picture below is Sowebo, Baltimore. So just to show you, I'm trying to do a little bit of everything. Um, And sometimes if you don't know which is which, you wouldn't be able to tell. It's so similar. That's the uh, um, soccer team and the Baltimore Ravens is the football team. Um, here you've got handmade musical instruments.
Baldwin was famous for his crabs, so they got all the ladies cooking crabs, they got in South Africa cooking meat. Um, you can see that Baldwin was in a lot of murders, drugs, guns, and the first one. That's gang graffiti, an example of uh, that's the Crips on the right. Similarly, gang graffiti in South Africa. I'm just showing, this is, this is a project that I'm working on now. And graffiti in other places. So another thing that I've been doing is I'm sort of the official photographer of the Houston Street Wall. This is a big wall on Houston Tower, and it was first painted by Keith Haring uh, in 1982. But now it's a, you, and you can see in this picture on the upper left corner, it's missing the corner. Uh, now the wall has a uh, facade over it, it's been built over it. And it's a curated wall and it changes every three months or so. So, um, well, you can see all the different artists here. Barry McGee did a wall that was full of tags. Pratt did a wall that was sort of graffiti derived. Kenny Sharp is an old school uh, graffiti street artist. But a lot of these are, uh, and Obey, Shepherd Ferry. Uh, I'm sure you can recognize a lot of these walls. Um, here's this wall uh, by Revoke and Pose uh, incorporated the Dandy piece. But you can see, if you look on the left bottom side, you can see that, um, of course, they know about that piece from uh, this photograph. And for my 70th birthday, a lot of artists got together and painted this wall um, as a tribute. It was, a, it was an amazing, amazing surprise. I'm working with a group that reminds me of a couple of um, community centers that we visited yesterday. I'm working with a community center uh, with young artists to produce a large mural. Um, and this, I took this picture last week. They're painting panels and it's going to be installed on the side of a, it's 50 feet high. And it's from one of my old street light photos. And the boy on the left, he's, he's taking a tire because he actually made bicycles from parts that he found on the street. So he was, um, and, and this, the building is in Brooklyn, and that picture was taken in Brooklyn. So they chose that picture for that mural, and now the kids are painting it under the direction of uh, Chris Stain and Billy Moe, two street artists. So, now I'm in Mexico, and I've had a wonderful time. Um, here we have the cha-cha-cha crew that painted this wall at this rest delicious restaurant that we ate in last night or the night before. And um, here we have the camera crew, which I'm rocking their shirt here. Um, that are, they're painting an incredibly impressive wall uh, outside the flower market, the Jamaica Mercado. And I was really impressed by their tools, their techniques, how they work, how they got their own wall together, they funded their own wall. Uh, they've made friends with the flower dealers inside the market who are feeding them. It's a real community project. And they were actually mixing their spray paint in a way that I had never seen before. They were mixing the colors in the can by putting the two cans together, which I thought was fantastic. And the, the box on the bottom, center bottom, is full of sponges that they cut to all different widths, and they use those as brushes. So this is like the perfect example of uh, do-it-yourself and ingenuity. <laughs> and they're being, I mean, really, ingenuity. They, they were, it's just amazing. They, they did the whole thing themselves. They didn't need, um, like, major sponsorship support or anything. Um, very impressive wall. If you get a chance, I think you should go and have a look. Um, here we are at Casa 
okay, help me out. That this this Um with um the collectivo the Phoebe Arte, <laughs> who were instrumental in bringing me here. We've been working for years to figure out how to do that. Um, these guys were so incredibly welcoming. I can't even tell you how many wonderful presents they gave me. And um, I just have to say thank you for all your hard work and organization. It is not easy to pull off on your own. Um, here we are <laughs> at the exhibition yesterday at the opening of the exhibit. This is one of the photos. It's up on the wall. So I encourage you to go have a look. I just absolutely love those spray can hats. Really, very clever. Um, and here is Emmanuel, who has done most of the hard work um, bringing me here, organizing this, taking me around, getting me something to eat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And also thanks to the American Embassy. Who would have ever thought that a U.S. Embassy could support anything that had to do with defeat? That's amazing. So this is well, this is the exhibit that's out at the park. There's 13 pictures. It's basically a timeline. It has a little bit of street play, a little bit of hip hop, a little bit of early defeat. Um, I hope you get a chance to see it. So now, of course, I'm doing all digital photography. And I am on Instagram a lot. And at first I thought I would never, ever want to take pictures with my phone. And now that's all I want to do, is say pictures with my phone. And here are two of the pictures that I've Instagrammed in the last few days. And I just, I saw her say go on the left. And the one on the right, you can see, has 3,025 likes, which is more likes than any picture I have ever posted. So, that's, first of all, I think it's an amazing wall. It's a great example of graffiti meeting street art. Uh, because you have these pieces, but you also have the image of the bear. Uh, beautifully carried out. Again, this is a collective. This is uh, a. What is the name of it? APC? ABC. 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 What is it? <laughs> um, but also, uh, Colectivo Graffiti Arte organized this wall. And I think it's magnificent, and obviously, uh, my followers are green, my Instagram followers. And that's it. This is my a present from Kaisa, right? Kaisa Paulina. And thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing me. I've had a wonderful time. y respuestas, eh, nos gustaría que sean breves, directas, para que podamos eh, seguir dando paso al programa. Entonces, vamos a ir por las primeras cinco, ¿les parece? Si no hay, podemos entonces, acá hay una. ¿Sí? ¿Te puedes acercar o tienen un micrófono por ahí? ¿Tú quieres una pregunta? ¿Sí? ¿Ahí hay otra? Okay. Yes. Tenemos dos preguntas. Marta. Okay. Uh, now that you've been covering muralism, uh, what sorts of effects have you, have you seen um, within the communities that, that are like, being brightened up and becoming more vibrant with all the paintings? Okay, I didn't quite hear that. What is it? Okay, with, now that you've been covering, covering muralism around yeah. the world, uh, what sorts of like tangible effects have you seen within the communities? That Wait, what sorts of which effects? Tangible effects. Uh, tangible effects. Ah, um, you know, I'm not just covering murals. I'm like interested in all kinds of way art, art is uh, being inserted in the communities. And I'm interested in things, for example, swoon, 
uh, has a program uh, building little houses in Haiti. Uh, there's an interesting program in South Africa where the uh, street artists decorated recyclers' carts, um, but it wasn't just a decoration thing. They also helped them rebuild their carts. They gave them vests. They gave them medical care. These are guys that go around the city collecting all kinds of recyclable cardboard and metal and everything. And they, they really elevated their self-esteem, which I think is a great project. In Baltimore, there's a project where they're painting murals on um, abandoned buildings that are in neighborhoods where the landlord has just let the building um, go to waste and where they're rat infested and everything, and they're, they're out, they're putting a QR code on the building, and if you read the QR code, it goes to a website that lists all the different violations that the landlord has, so they're basically embarrassing landlords. Um, I have to say, in a lot of cases, I think that the murals are real estate projects, and sometimes uh, the results of that are not all positive, because sometimes um, it's a chain of events that, that drives out the people who are living, you know, artists move in and the, they, the people who are living there can no longer they afford to, to buy the, the rent the apartments. So those are the kinds of things I've seen. Is that, is that sort of what you meant? <laughs> is that okay? Anybody else? Hi, hi. Uh, I'm just curious about the girl that did in front of you the freeze. You were talking about that a girl, a Mexican girl, did a freeze in front of you. Oh yeah, she was a B girl that had met not here. I, I don't think I even got her name. But why did you see her? Yeah, no, no, no. I was asking about. Uh, the, she came yesterday. And she said, she said that she knew my friend Mika, who was the woman who had written the B-Girl book. She said, I'm a B-Girl, and I said, let's see a freeze, and so she did. So Mexico has a B-Girl crew, but I'm, uh, unfortunately I didn't get her name. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Are you nice? You now? Oui. Hey, Marta. Yeah. Uh, the name of the girl is Sol B. The girl of yesterday, the freak, the girl. His name, her name is B, Sol B. Oh, okay. Sol B. There you go. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Hey, Marta. <laughs> uh, which is your vision uh, about the hip hop uh, around the world in Mexico? Uh -huh. Okay. Did you get that? That's her name. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> My, my question is uh, about your vision uh, about the hip hop in, around the world and here in Mexico. Yeah, say that again. You want me to tell you my vision about the hip hop about around, the world. around the world? That's, That's a big question. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't followed hip hop lately. I mean, I'm, I, of course, I owe my life is in entwined with hip hop, but it's not as if I know a lot about hip hop, I don't really know the music and everything, but I do know that I don't think there's any country in the world that doesn't have some form of hip hop, so um, for me that is the most interesting part, that, that what I thought was um, a very local culture, specific to New York City, uh, was something that went around the world. But, of course, the, you know, people are always asking me, well, is it so commercial, you know? Yes, it's commercial. Um, but I'm, I'm sure they're still very creative um, practitioners. I, I mean, I, in the, in the B-boy and B-girl world, there are some amazing dancers. And, and even if they're dancing, they're, they're sponsored, they're dancing for money. It's no not, it's not longer an underground culture, but it's still an interesting culture. Sorry, it's the best I can do.
like to see somebody up. That's as good as I can. I don't, I don't have a really good answer for why. I think it probably, you'd have to ask each individual writer why. You know, if we're gonna, are we going to sign books? Because I'm worried that we're not going to have enough time to sign books. Okay. Me parece que entonces ella está pidiendo que se firmen los libros, que me parece que una, es una parte importante porque muchos vinieron de lejos y traen su, su material, me parece que es justo. Y si quieren, después acercan y hacen esas preguntas también. Entonces la dinámica va a ser la siguiente, necesitamos que las personas que tengan algún libro se pongan donde está esa bocina para atrás y las personas que, que ven lo que no traen, por favor salgan.